Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up loop meeting uh, prerequisites for Office 365, and meaning uh, set up service accounts, set up uh, the rights for, for the accounts and so on and so on. So the first thing you should do is go to our support page and follow these two steps. These are very important to uh, get your Office 365 working with loop meeting. So uh, let's see on the guide here what you need to do. So first of all, you need to create a service account. Basically, it's just a normal user account in your Office 365 environment. So I'm not going to go through how to do that. It's, it's straightforward. And the same also, we guess that you already have um, meeting rooms in your environment. So what I will show you now is what you need to do for this service account in the, able to, to make it work. So in your office portal, you see we have some meeting rooms, you see here. And there's also a service account and the administration account. So I will jump to my Exchange admin console. And then I will configure my meeting rooms. And what I'm going to do now is to add the service account uh, rights to the different rooms. So I select a meeting room and I go to manage delegates and then I add my service account it was room admin and I assign it full access and save so now I need to repeat this step for all my meeting rooms uh, that I'm going to assign a meeting room panels for so just do that for all the meeting rooms you have Now for the next step, we need to create a room list. So a room list is basically just a, a distribution list that is converted to a room list. So let's just uh, add the group and add the rooms to the group. So it's a distribution list. And we will give it a name. Meeting rooms, you can call it whatever you like. We need to assign one owner. So let's choose the service account. And we need to add rooms to the distribution list. So in this case, I will add all my meeting rooms. And make sure you don't select any user accounts, because it can only have uh, meeting rooms as members. And I give it an email address. So I got meeting rooms here. And now I would need to convert this uh, list to a room list. So then I need to run some PowerShell commands. And all of the commands are documented here in our documentation on how to create the room list. And then a little bit further down, we need to run some PowerShell commands. So please start uh, PowerShell as an admin and just run through the commands. Yes, you need to install this one. I have already done this because you only need to do this once. So run this command, please. And the next command, you need to log in to your Office 365 account. So we will do this and we need to change here to a global admin account. Like this. And now there's a login window that pops up. Like this. So I will just confirm and log in. Okay. 
So it's doing this it's a thing here. Okay, so now for the next step, uh, it's the actual conversion. So here, it's the next command we want to run. So in here, you will need to put in whatever name you, you gave the distribution list. So, and now it's it's created as a room list. So if I want to check out, <clears throat> um, if I have um, the room list, so I can run this command here and see whatever room lists I have. So let's do that. Yeah, so I got these meeting rooms and it's a room list. So everything is fine. Okay, then Please note that after you have done changes here, like you have now we have created this meeting room uh, list, it could take up to 24 to 48 hours before it will actually be available. So I will show you in the next step how to get and, and access the room list and the rooms in the loop meeting admin console. So for the next step, we're going to register uh, administration account on uh, the loop meeting admin portal. So please go to this URL here and you select registration and you fill in your company uh, details. So I would recommend that you don't register it on your personal account, but on a, some administration account that you, you have and share with your colleagues or even Later on, you can enable login with Azure AD. So you can use Azure AD uh, credentials to log into this uh, portal. So let's just register. And then we can log in. So let's log in. Now, when you log in for the first time, uh, the first thing that you need to do is to uh, select what kind of a server that you want to connect to. So in this case here, we will select Office 365 MS Graph, which is the most common way to connect to uh, pure Office 365 installations. I do a get access token. Now here, it's very important that you, the first time you log in here, that you log in as a global administrator because now we're going to register uh, the actual loop meeting application in your Azure AD. So I'm logging in, in here, global, and I need to give my consent. So now after I've done this, I don't need to do anything more here before I do a couple other steps. So you go to your Azure portal, portal.azure.com, and it will look like this when you log in. And please here on the side, select Azure Active Directory. And you select Enterprise Applications. And here, now you have the loop meeting application registered here. So you click it and you go to users and groups. Now, please, you need to add the service account that you created earlier on. So I do add user group and I select some here and I select my service account and select and assign. So now this um, service account has access rights for my loop meeting application. So under permissions, I can just check to see if everything looks okay. And I see 
we should probably have some more here. So let's do a grant here. Click this. And again, do a global admin account. And grant. OK. Now everything is set here in this uh, environment. So I could go back to my MS Graph uh, settings and, and settings in, in the Loop Meeting portal. But remember that after you've done changes, it could take quite a while before they are visible. So uh, just give it um, 8 to 24 hours, and then you can revisit here uh, and continue. OK, now we are ready to uh, log in with the uh, actual service account. So please just delete the access token and get access token. And now make sure that you log in with the service account, not your user account and not the global admin account. But here, you need to use the service account. All right, so we log in. Then we save settings. And what happens is it synchronizes um, the rooms from the Office 365 tenant. So if I now go to rooms, you will see that I have the room list and I have the different rooms that I have configured. So now before we start configuring the different rooms, let's set some, set some basic things in here. So report email address is the email address that you would like any feedback from uh, from the room to to get into. So let's do uh, like so forge. And you set the language, whatever language you like to to have on the panels. And then let's add um, a company logo to show in the panels. So here it's highly recommended that you use a transparent PNG file. Otherwise, it will look kind of funny if you have the white background. So please uh, select a good uh, logo file. So let's see, I have, uh, and you can just drag and drop it in here. So you drag it and you select it. So you see the URL to the, to the logo here. All right. And uh, you could also do background pictures and even loop sign as a background. So but here we will select no background at all. Working hours means um, outside of this, the, the, the time you set here, the panel will go into sleep mode. So seven to seven should be all right. Automatic cancels means that it will show a message on the screen when the meeting has started for the X amount of minutes that you set here. And, in the, and it means that you have to confirm that the meeting has started. If you don't press the button within the, the time frame, it will automatically cancel the meeting. So reboot. Um, no need to set that unless you have some challenges with your network. A pin code for, for booking, you can set, it's optional. Add new meeting on the panel, for sure. But we recommend that you only allow to add meeting for the same day. If you click this, you will also be able to add meetings on the panel for um, tomorrow, the day after, or and so on and so on. Multi-room, it's whatever you want to enable other meeting rooms to show on, on the panel as well. And I will show you how it works. Um, these two settings here are if you are going to use a background. Remaining time wheel is fine. Meeting schedule, well, it's optional. To, to get a full description of all these settings, go to our support page. Uh, it's like here. And let's just go back here to our support overview. And you have how to set up central admin console which basically takes you through all these settings that you have in the console. So you can study this uh, description to get all the details on how to set up all everything here. So save settings. Now it's saved. So then I go to the rooms. 
and let's say I want to configure the settings for a room building. So it can fit uh, 16 people, it has a screen, and it has video conference, and it has a whiteboard. Fine. That's it. And if I want to do any overrides, meaning I want to set maybe some different language on this panel, or I want to do I want to change something that it's not set in, in general settings, I can do this here. So I can change the, the behavior of, of this specific panel if I like to do that, but I'm not gonna do that for, for this. So, so here's the panel, here's the configuration code. And what you also need to be aware of, you need to set some passwords. So you need to set the install password. I'm just gonna do a very easy one here and also device password. So set whatever you like here. Uh, and this is important that you actually set these because they will correspond to how, how you install the, the panel and how you can configure the pan panel afterwards. So I save again. So I go to rooms and now I'm gonna configure the actual panel. So here I have a panel. So Let's configure this with the room Berlin. I do central setup and I add the code for the room. Okay, so this is the code for this specific room. You see it corresponds here. And then I do the install password that I set in my config console and I finish. And what happens now, it downloads the, the settings to the panel with the logo that I set and with all the settings that I set. And now, well, the panel is basically ready to go. And uh, I mentioned this multi-room. If I click this button, I will also see the other rooms that I have in my environment. And I can also go in here and, and book a meeting on, on the specific room as well. So basically, now you're all set. Everything is set up and everything is running. And if I do changes here, let's say I want to change uh, the logo because this was the wrong logo. I can just remove this. And I can add uh, another picture here. So I just need to find the correct picture. So let's see. Give me a sec here and I will find the, the correct one. So this is also um, a PNG file. So I do this and I just drop it here, select it and I save. And now on the actual panel, it will change automatically during the night. But if I want to check out to see how it looks straight away, I can go into the panel and I can do reload settings and home. And I got the new logo. So thanks everybody. And uh, hope you will enjoy our product. Thanks.